What's up guys, welcome back. Today we're doing something that's been highly requested. I'll be showing you how to make a Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich at home. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell and enable notifications as well. All right guys, so as promised, we're doing something a little bit different today. You guys have been asking for a copycat Chick-fil-A recipe. So today I'm gonna show you how to make it happen. But first, let's take a look at what we got. This is about a $6 sandwich, but turns into a $26 sandwich once we get it from DoorDash. Can't forget the Chick-fil-A sauce. I'll be showing you guys how to make this as well. I have the deluxe with a little pepper jack. Oh, already messed up the bun. Did that on purpose so that my bun looks better at least. Quick little taste test. Let's take it all the way out. There we go. Little Chick-fil-A sauce. Good as new. So let's take a look here. We got two pieces of tomato. Pretty small patty. Usually the patties are a lot bigger than that. Two pickles. Let's see how it tastes. Without the Chick-fil-A sauce, that wouldn't be very good. Um, the patty's a little dry. Usually, usually I'm a big fan of Chick-fil-A sandwiches, but this one's not their best work. Maybe they're doing me a favor. Chick-fil-A sauce is always on the money though. Let's do one more bite. All right guys, so admittedly a pretty good sandwich, especially for the price, you can't beat it. Chick-fil-A is very reputable, very well known. They make an excellent sandwich. But I'll show you how I would do it a little bit differently. Let's go ahead and make it happen. All right, we're getting started with two nice sized chicken breasts. These are about eight ounces each. We're gonna butterfly them. So take your sharp knife and cut them in half as you see me doing right here. There you go. That way you got more manageable size uh, chicken breast to work with there. You don't want it to be super thick. So this is gonna work out just fine for me. Next, we're gonna go ahead and brine this chicken. So Chick-fil-A uses pickle juice. However, I like to use a combination of pickle juice and buttermilk. So that's what we're going with here today. As always guys, the specific measurements and ingredients can be found in the description box below. So don't forget to check that out. So we have our brine here. We're going in with pickle juice and about a quart or so of buttermilk, followed by some Louisiana hot sauce or whatever hot sauce you like. Doesn't make a big difference there. You can add more or less depending on how spicy you want the chicken sandwich to end up. Next, we're going in with a little Cajun seasoning and a little onion powder and garlic. Break out the whisk and mix to combine those ingredients. There we go. And then we're gonna submerge the chicken in this uh, buttermilk brine for about two to four hours. Depending on how much time you have on your hands, you could do this for about you know 45 minutes to an hour if you're pressed for time. There we go, then we're gonna cover that up and pop that in the refrigerator. And now we're gonna dive into some Chick-fil-A secrets. So we got two cups of all-purpose flour and two to three tablespoons of powdered sugar, which I found to be pretty interesting, but it's actually pretty good. And we're also going in with some MSG or accent, followed by some salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic, and celery salt. You can adjust the seasonings to whatever you like on your chicken, no big deal. There's a bunch of different recipes online for Chick-fil-A copycat sandwiches, so, you know, do your thing. Go in with a little bit of paprika as well to add some color and a little bit of cayenne pepper too, just for a hint of spice. And last but not least, a little bit of Cajun seasoning. I recommend tasting your flour, guys. That way you know for sure that the flour is adequately seasoned. If not, you're really just guessing. So once you add your seasoning, give it a good mix, get in there with a fingertip and give it a taste just to make sure you can actually taste that seasoning. That's a great pro tip for any time you're frying anything. You wanna make sure that the flour is adequately seasoned. If it doesn't taste good before it goes into the oil, it's not gonna taste good when it comes out. 
There we go, we've mixed all that together. Our chicken has taken a nice bath in that brine. We're gonna strain off any excess buttermilk and go right into the flour. You really wanna make sure that it's breaded evenly, that way you have you know, an adequate crust on the chicken. We wanna make sure that it's nice and crunchy. There we go. So just be real intentional about it. Use your hand and make sure that it's sticking nicely to the chicken. That buttermilk really comes in handy for this. The buttermilk helps that flour really adhere to the meat. Another key step to frying anything is to allow the meat to rest for about 10 to 15 minutes before you fry it. That way the flour has time to adhere to the meat and it sticks to the chicken and doesn't end up at the bottom of your frying pan. All right, next up, we're going in with about a half gallon or so of peanut oil. While that's coming up to temperature, we're gonna slice our tomato. Let's see if we can get a nice thin slice here. And uh, nope, that's too thick. Yeah, that's too thick also. There we go, that's what we're looking for. Nice thin sliced tomato, not one, but two. That's about the thickness I'm looking for in my tomato, but again, totally up to you. We also have some pepper jack, some dill pickle, of course our tomato, brioche buns, and some green bib lettuce. Next, we're on to the Chick-fil-A sauce. So I'm going in with a half cup of mayonnaise, followed by a fourth cup of your favorite barbecue sauce. There we go. This one has a lot of brown sugar in it, so it actually was a little bit darker than I wanted it, but it came out delicious. Next, we're going in with one fourth cup of honey, followed by two tablespoons of yellow mustard. Also a little Dijon mustard and some fresh squeezed lemon juice. Again, guys, quick reminder that all of the specific measurements and ingredients can be found in the description box below. Be careful to make sure you don't add any seeds to your sauce. We don't want that. Gonna season it up a little bit, a little salt and pepper, a little Cajun seasoning, whatever you wanna put in there just to add a little bit more flavor. Always season to taste, taste as you go and adjust the flavor to your preference. And that, my friends, is looking good. Like a more flavorful Chick-fil-A sauce if that's possible. All right, so this is what our chicken breast is looking like after it's sat for a couple minutes. Like I said, it really helps to make sure that your chicken's nice and crispy when you take that step. Let's use our food thermometer here to make sure our oil is up to 350 degrees. Once it is, we're gonna add our chicken breast. Always lay the meat into the oil away from you so you avoid burning yourself. And we're gonna cook these until they hit 165 degrees internal temperature. You can flip them occasionally just to make sure they're not sticking to the pan. There we go. Next up, we're gonna toast our brioche buns. So we're going into our skillet with about a tablespoon of butter here. Once that butter melts, we're going in with the buns. Nothing like a good brioche bun. Let me know in the comments if you guys have ever tried a Chick-fil-A copycat recipe. Also, let me know if you plan on making this one because this is fantastic. Can't wait for you guys to try this. There's that homemade Chick-fil-A sauce. I'm a both sides of the bun guy. If you couldn't see from the beginning of the video, I put way too much sauce on the sandwich and here I am doing it again. You know, sometimes you just don't learn from your mistakes. There we go. Going down with three pickles. The pickles are optional. My wife hates them, but I enjoy them. So we're going down with three pickles, a little lettuce, one slice of thin tomato, and that chicken that we melted a little pepper jack cheese on top bun and there you have it folks a chick-fil-a deluxe chicken sandwich brace yourself for a trademark money shot and you know i gotta try this this is gonna be fantastic look at that now that is a chicken patty much bigger than the one from chick-fil-a you can see the juice just running out of there oh man that's good you guys definitely gotta try that chick-fil-a sauce recipe for sure don't forget to give your boy a thumbs up, hit that like button and the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell to enable notifications as well. And as always, thank you for your support.